So the next talk is how to build uh, microservices using 0MQ and WSGI by Sinath GS. He is a head uh, of engineering team at Idea Device, building an orchestration platform for data center activities and application life uh, lifecycle management. Uh, hi, hi everyone. I am uh, Srinath. I work at Idea Device as technical lead. We are building uh, the next gen uh, orchestration platform and uh, we are trying to solve uh, complicated use cases with uh, cloud application lifecycle management. So in the process of building an orchestration engine, we, uh, we, we stumbled upon a lot of uh, um, uh, patterns with uh, microservices and we also started using uh, uh, zero MQ and uh, uh, and we we end up uh, we ended up writing a um, uh, writing a framework for uh, framework which will serve as a bridge between uh, uh, zero MQ and uh, the Python's uh, standard WSGI protocol. All right. So so today I'm going to uh, take you through all these uh, topics. I think most of you uh, would know about uh, all of these things. So we'll uh, see about what microservices are. And uh, how and what is zero MQ and how zero MQ helps us in building uh, microservices and uh, how to build restful microservices with uh, zero MQ as well and then we'll see a small uh, real world example and then we'll uh, also discuss about uh, how ZWSG can be improved further, right? So what are microservices? Microservices uh, is an architecture style where uh, multiple independent processes communicate among each other and each and every independent process does a well-defined small uh, subset of uh, a particular big task which is supposed to be done. So microservices uh, are the only way to scale uh, your backend services as of now. And uh, so given that it is so awesome that you can build a highly scalable uh, web application or a highly scalable uh, any sort of application with uh, microservices. There are some problems associated with it as well. So the, one of the main problems is service discovery and uh, uh, without knowing which endpoint to connect to and without knowing which endpoint to connect to to do a specific task, it becomes highly complicated for all the backend services to talk to each other. So that's problem number one. And given that all these uh, my, uh, microservices, all the pro processes talk to each other among a communication channel, so, we, so just having HTTP or just having a simple TCP server would not suffice because each and every uh, task can be done by, each, uh, by, a, by some microser microservice which might not be exposed out directly through some endpoint, right? So I'm talking about uh, load balanced and, uh, uh, and uh, service oriented ar architectures here when I'm talking about uh, communication pro patterns and stuff. So why not just use HTTP and live with it? So one of the major problems with HTTP is that you need to know which port to connect to and you need to know, you need, so, so you can avoid that problem by having a load balancer so uh, probably that, that part of the problem can be solved. But then uh, uh, even before a particular process comes up, you cannot know where you should connect to. You wouldn't know where you should connect to. And always, you know, HTTP follows this request reply, request reply sort of a pattern where uh, you send a request, you wait for a response. After the response is uh, given to you, you assume that you assume that the, the task is done. And uh, one more process, one more problem that comes with HTTP is that you need to have uh, uh, a way to manage uh, timeouts, retries, and if you have n number of workers, which worker can do what task, and how can you uh, allocate work among these workers as such. So that becomes a big problem. So here is where, uh, here is where uh, zero MQ would actually fit in. And uh, zero MQ helps us build, uh, um, so zero MQ uh, helps us build uh, microservices which can be distributed 
amongst different uh, machines in your data center, or it can be uh, uh, it can be in a single machine as well. It supports all sorts of uh, communications, like it, basically it provides us uh, sockets, right? So sockets which can be done, uh, which which uh, comply with uh, the TCP or which can which can be a Unix domain uh, socket and uh, the uh, zero MQ in itself also gives us a lot of other features like in process communication and uh, and other uh, stuff so starting from version 4 uh, they have uh, they have integrated with uh, libcurve uh, curve ZM, zmq which is uh, which uses elliptical cr uh, cryptography so you can have uh, have uh, used zero mq you can have uh, uh, zero mq bound on a public interface so the the security is also taken care of right so all this is fine but why would you want to use a se separate uh, you know separate uh, module which just gives us sockets but nothing else why would you want to use such a thing when I can uh, build something on my own, right? But it, it's not just that zero MQ gives us only sockets, but it also gives us uh, a, a variety of communication patterns to uh, to deal with, and uh, it also supports for supports uh, G event. So that way uh, we uh, we can have uh, uh, optimal resource uh, utilization when you are doing an I/O call or when you are doing. A, uh, uh, wait for a particular process to come up or wait for a particular worker to be available or something like that. So uh, if you use uh, G event, G events, uh, event based uh, queues and event based uh, IO systems. So zero MQ also gives us uh, a polar mechanism called green polar. So if you use all of these things, uh, the, the, the application t uh, ends up using lesser amount of res resources. So let's look at uh, the zero MQ patterns. So first one is request reply. I think everyone knows about uh, what request reply is, right? So request reply pattern is where uh, you have n number of clients and uh, any, uh, any of the client can connect to the server and uh, the server then sends a response back after doing a specific uh, uh, you know, request or something like that. So so this is one of the most used uh, uh, patterns even in today's world uh, because uh, even HTTP follows this lockstep mechanism where you send a request and then you get you wait for a response, right? All right. So okay, the next pattern available is uh, uh, publish sub subscribe. So where you can have uh, multiple publishers. Uh, uh, you know, pushing data to uh, to one subscriber, or you can have one publisher pushing data to uh, many subscribers, and these subscribers can also have uh, can also subscribe to a specific to topic, so to say. So uh, the publisher can, uh, when when it is publishing, it can send uh, so send events based on uh, uh, events pertaining to a specific to topic. So, so the subscriber which, he, which has subscribed to a topic can get the uh, request, right? So, okay. Next thing uh, which zero MQ gives us is router dealer pattern. So, in case of a router dealer pattern, what happens is that so you have set of uh, dealers connected to a router, right? So, well, all these uh, dealers when they are connecting to to a router. So zero MQ also gives us this ability called uh, zero MQ socket identity. So this, uh, the, all the dealers in the, uh, in the connected to the router can be addressed uniquely by using this uh, socket identity, right? So, so when you want to send a request to a specific dealer, for example, if you want to send a re uh, specific request to D3, then the, the server code, the application code which is written in S1, can uh, just send a request, uh, send a request on the router socket with a specific identity, which is equal to the dealer D3's identity, right? So then the dealer D3 will get the request and then it can then further process it. 
and you can build uh, complex pipelining mechanisms uh, using uh, zero MQ by using this uh, push-pull uh, mechanism. For example, you have a producer P1 which pushes to consumer C1 and then the consumer C1 in turn can push to uh, an, an aggregator probably, right? So, so these, are, uh, these are the different uh, patterns available. So, all right. Uh, so now we love zero MQ. Zero MQ is cool. I want to use zero MQ, but I have my project written in Django or Pyramid or uh, Flask or any other uh, Python web framework. So I don't want to change a lot of my business logic. I, I want to do some minimalistic changes, and I want to be able to uh, run things using zero MQ. So which is where Python presents us with this nice thing called web server gateway interface. So WSGI stands for web, web server gateway interface and it is the Python standard for web, uh, web applications. So what it does is web server gateway interface gives us two endpoints. One is the web server or the gateway uh, side and the other one is the application or the framework side. So uh, Python uh, WSGI has uh, uh, given us guidelines as to what all the, uh, the gateway side should implement and what all uh, the, the application, uh, application side should implement. So we have these two interfaces. So what now, when, now that we, have, we already are in the premise that I have written all my uh, application code in Django or Pyramid or, uh, or Flask, I don't want to change my code. So we can leave the application side of code uh, as such. We don't have to change a lot of uh, stuff in that. We can only change the server side of it. So by changing the server side, uh, actually um, uh, our uh, library Zardwizgi does uh, change only the server side of it. So that way we get the best of both worlds, so to say, right? So one of the awesome things with uh, uh, using uh, a HTTP framework, a web framework like Django or Pyramid or, or anything of that sort, is that we don't have to write a complex uh, function dispatch uh, uh, table. So, so if, if packet type is this, dispatch to this function. If parameter is this, dispatch to this function. If uh, request method is this, dispatch to this function. So all of these things are, um, uh, handled thoroughly by the uh, during the routes configuration stage itself. So the function dispatch table is sort of sort of in a way written in the routes, but uh, we don't exactly write the function dispatch tables, right? All right. So zero. Uh, so now now we know we have zero MQ and we have a WSGI application. We want to make a bridge between them, right? So which is where uh, ZWSGI will come. And uh, ZWSGI is open source. You can uh, access it at uh, github.com slash idea device slash uh, ZWSGI. So it helps us to write uh, RESTful uh, APIs with uh, zero MQ. It adheres to the WSGI protocol and we get all, we get the best of both worlds, right? All right, so, so this is okay. So now when we talk about uh, real world scenarios, real world scenarios we have um, yeah, you know, we have n number of clients and uh, all the clients, uh, let's say, they want to make a specific task, right? They, they want the uh, server, your backend, to do a specific task. And this, that specific task can be split into n number of uh, uh, small tasks. For example, um, in the URL that is given, so rfc.0mq.org slash spec colon seven, so it describes the major domo protocol, MDP, where, uh, where uh, you know, the clients ask for, uh, make, uh, to make, uh, to, uh, clients ask the server to make uh, tea, right? Tea requires water, milk, and uh, tea, obviously, right? Tea powder. So, so you have a set of workers assigned, uh, one assigned for doing a specific task. So now the central dispatcher can then dispatch, split the work into smaller uh, items, and then it can dispatch it to different uh, workers, and then get the consolidated output and return back to the client, right? 
So that is one model, uh, that's, that's probably one model of, do, one way of doing it. The, we can also have an asynchronous way of execution where uh, we, send a, we send a request to central dispatcher and then the central dispatcher says that it will be done when, when it's going to be done. And then, uh, and then it can then dispatch the work to uh, all the other uh, workers that are available, right? So, so this protocol in short is called a uh, uh, major domo protocol and a major domo protocol in, uh, uh, it also has uh, further uh, other uh, specifications laid out, for example, heartbeats and, uh, ha heartbeats and, uh, yeah, and all the URL schemes and uh, everything else associated with it, right? All right, so before that, so, okay, so this is one of the product that uh, we are building right now, right? So this can bring up, uh, bring up all these uh, nodes and it can automatically figure out all the dependency, dependencies and it can orchestrate, um, it can basically realize this uh, given graph to, uh, to orchestrate, by orchestrating specific parts of it and it can figure out which parts need to be done parallelly and which part needs to be done serially and all. And then finally you will get a, get a sentry cluster, you will get a Postgres uh, database and you would have Redis sitting on Docker and, uh, and HA proxy separately, right? So, so all of this is uh, done by using uh, uh, ZWSGI and uh, in, in ZWSGI also, we we have uh, we have implemented the complete uh, major domo uh, protocol uh, on our own right it will take some time for running so okay what is the road ahead for uh, zwisgi as such right so using ZWSGI, uh, we can probably build an enterprise message bus. We can do uh, queuing and we can throttle all the requests. We can come up with some uh, HA strategies or um, you, and normally also uh, when you have uh, microservices, you would want some admin channel where you can, uh, where you can go and inspect uh, all the uh, processes that are there in your cluster and uh, and with zero MQ, we also get to this uh, problem where uh, we don't have a direct way to talk to zero MQ. You need a gateway. You need a HTTP to zero MQ gateway. And we can also have uh, certain client libraries like uh, so for doing uh, uh, get, post, all, uh, and broadcast, and all those uh, requests. Uh, probably it can be based out of uh, the request library itself. Request library allows us to change the transport layer. So, and also, uh, though we have an implementation where we have heartbeats and uh, worker management done, we are yet to open source uh, the heartbeat uh, uh, management, heartbeat and uh, worker management for, uh, for the outside world. All right, this has started, right? Oh, there is some approval pending. I did not think of this. The alignment is slightly off. Yeah. So, so it has brought up a Docker host. It has in installed HA proxy on it, and it is bringing up all these other uh, components on the same uh, Docker host. So, in a way, we also help build uh, microservices. All right, so, so I'm done. So do you have any questions?
Hey, um, great talk. Thanks for that. Uh, so potentially, the question is like, ZeroMQ exposes a Python API as such. Yes. So right. bindings are available for almost all languages. Uh, there are bindings available for Go. There are bindings available for so f for .NET they rewrote the complete uh, zero MQ core, mm -hmm. and uh, for Python we have uh, Pi zero MQ. Pi zero. Pi zero. Why write a whiskey? So uh, Pi zero MQ does not allow you to um, uh, accept requests uh, like HTTP requests, right? So you don't have a facility to have uh, URLs, and you don't have this uh, HTTP spec as such. Uh, implemented in Pi Zero MQ. Okay, so typically the scenario that I'm talking about is like uh, we are having a storage solution. Okay. And uh, let's say we have uh, Samba configured in that. Okay. So whenever I make some changes, I want the Samba servers to restart basically. Okay. So uh, how we typically approach to it is like we uh, use the Python Zero MQ APIs, mm. and then instead of restarting the service through Django application, basically Django hangs off once you do any service restarts. So we span out a zero MQ microservice through the APIs and it just does the job. So why a WSGI again? I don't really need a HTTP to directly go to a... So, so it depends on your uh, uh, application, right? So uh, what, what necessarily is that, see in your case, you have built all the microservices which talk over HTTP but they don't talk over zero MQ and they're not taking advantage of the zero MQ patterns that are available. For example, router dealer is, a, is such a powerful pattern that you don't have to know the IP address of the uh, of IP address or the port that is there in the, th that, that is going to be there in, uh, it can be there either in your machine or it can be there in any other machine, but you can allocate tasks to that. So given that uh, zero MQ has such very powerful uh, patterns in it, right? So you're, so by just having uh, a HTTP based uh, microservice architecture, you're not utilizing the complete potential of zero MQ, right? Any questions? Yeah. Hello, Next. yeah, um, uh, great talk, thanks. Uh, zero MQ, as far as I understand it, is uh, broker less, right? Uh, uh, could you compare yes. and uh, contrast maybe like uh, the difference between a br um, with broker versus brokerless and maybe some use cases where uh, where it would fit all right. in each uh, case? All right. So zero MQ uh, by itself it does not dictate whether you need a broker or not, right? But you can end up with configuration. For example, this major domo protocol involved a cent central dispatcher, which sort of is a broker, which sort of is a proxy between all the backend processes. To the, to the clients, right? So, so you can uh, arrive at a point where you have brokers in your architecture, you can arrive at a point where you don't have brokers with your, in your architecture. So, so if you don't have brokers, it becomes very difficult for you to uh, uh, you know, identify all the endpoints where you have to do, where you have to connect to, right? But if you have a broker, it's just a single endpoint for you, right? So, so these are sort of the trade-offs between having a broker and not having a broker. But one of the major downsides of having a broker would mean that if that broker goes down, then, you, uh, then all your other uh, um, processes would be rendered unreachable, right? Uh, hi, this is not about zero MQ, but uh, in general, uh, in microservices, how do you handle authentication uh, between uh, services? Authentication between yes. services. So, so authentication between services can be done by say, uh, either if all all of your uh, microservices have to have some authentication, then you can come up with uh, your internal uh, component level authentication mechanism. That's one way to do it. Or you can use whatever authentication mechanism that you use for uh, uh, your external uh, external components. For example, user user authentication or anything. So, so as such, uh, you so can use... So something like uh, JSON web tokens, JWTs. Right? You can use anything uh, that you would want to. Right? Thanks. Any questions? Any more okay. questions? I think that's it. That's it. Okay. Thanks enough. Yeah, thanks.